Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. Sometimes I really think there is something wrong with Western people and what they have become. A Christian person could say something like, I believe that a marriage is between a man and a woman. And already many people completely lose their minds. In America, people lost it because a Christian baker didn't want to bake a cake for a gay wedding. Yet, when a Muslim suggests that homosexuals should be executed in the most horrible ways, people seem to just ignore that. Maybe because it's Islam and you don't want to be Islamophobic now, do you? Daniel Hikikachu is a relatively popular Muslim apologist in America who has a very traditionalist Islamic perspective and he's not shy from sharing his terrible ideas very openly and directly. Don't get me wrong, he doesn't have very exceptionally extreme beliefs. He's simply honest about them. Recently, Daniel shared this joke on Twitter. Oh man, I missed the International Day Against Homophobia. The best way to celebrate such a beautiful, momentous, important day is the Muslim way. Recreational base jumping. <laughs> <laughs> At first glance, this sounds like a very edgy joke. But Daniel Hakikachu here and his little Islamic pawns are not just trying to provoke people by being humorous. Their humor actually reflects what they believe in. For all those who somehow still don't know, homosexual intercourse is punishable by death in Islam. Daniel Hakikachu here is referencing the Islamic punishment to execute gay people by throwing them off a high place and making their punishment a spectacle for people, so that they are scared and don't do the same. Because Allah is the most merciful, most kind. He goes on enjoying the idea of executing people by adding Nothing shows solidarity for LGBT like extreme sports. <laughs> <laughs> Since I am aware that he's not just joking, but packing something very terrible as a joke in order to get away with it, all I wanted to say was, you're an evil piece of shit. Whereupon he replied to me saying, don't feel left out, Apostate Rudvan, we have special activities to celebrate International Apostate Day too. <laughs> <laughs> and his little fans found that very funny. He's referencing the killing of apostates like me under Islam, a law that has always existed in Islam and which is still theoretically or practically, legally or socially in place in many Muslim countries. Mr. Pikachu here believes that me and others like me deserve to be put to death simply for leaving Islam and being public about it. Because by his Islamic logic, sanctioned by the very holy prophet Muhammad, people like me put other people's eternal afterlives in danger, which is worse than temporary life, which means we can just be executed. If we, if me and Ali were apostates and it was discovered that we're apostates, what would happen to us? You'd be detained, you'd have uh, three days um, to change your mind. If you didn't do that, then it would be capital punishment. But you're advertising, you're speaking about leaving the religion, and that threatens everyone's afterlife. If you think it through, it does make sense. If you look at it from a very severely wicked Islamic perspective. But then again, it also makes sense that we should maybe ban Islam, considering that it logically justifies the killing of people who refuse to believe in it, or who made sexual choices that are contrary to the high moral values of Islam. In fact, last year, when the tiny nation of Brunei was about to implement the death penalty for several crimes like homosexuality, Daniel Hakikachu wrote an article titled Salute the Sultan. Brunei reinstates hudud for sexual deviance. Hudud refers to Islamic punishments. It says things like, If you have had a rough week or are feeling down in the dumps, I have just the news to cheer you up. The Muslim country of Brunei is implementing hudud to crack down on sodomites and fornicators. The article calls gay people rectum sex enthusiasts. LGBT, I call them rectum sex enthusiasts. <laughs> rectum sex enthusiasts. Rectum sex enthusiasts. <laughs> rectum sex enthusiasts. <laughs> he ends his article sarcastically telling fellow Muslims to visit Brunei and attend a public caning there to see Islamic justice in action and laughs about the outrage by Western people and media. The article could even be mistaken as satire. It sounds unreal. It is not. He seriously justified it and explained before and after that he stands by Islam's traditional rulings. And he seriously means what he says. There is something I find very disgusting here. If Western people do very mild things, like talk about the serious problem of grooming gangs, talk about immigration, talk about Islam, 
They may be permanently banned from platforms like Twitter or Facebook, or be censored on YouTube. Yet if someone named Daniel Hakikachu, who is the wrong kind of Daniel, who is an American Islamist with Persian origins, advocates for the killing of people, for their beliefs and sexualities, no one cares. In fact, he shared his article, which applauded Brunei and called for the Muslim world to follow suit on social media. And all that happened was that his post was deleted on Facebook, and he got a meager seven day suspension from Facebook. I was really shocked that I was banned for seven days uh, for posting this. That's extremely uh, authoritarian and controlling and, and tyrannical. Imagine that. Islamist Pikachu here advocates for the elimination of free speech and the execution of blasphemers, homosexuals, and apostates, but he finds a seven-day suspension on Facebook tyrannical. <laughs> Tyrannical. There are a lot of problems with this guy. In a lengthy paper, he explained how the death penalty and the labeling of homosexuals only applies to people who commit, not merely feel, homosexual behavior. Which of course makes everything much better. In one instance, he complains about the Western dramatization of child marriage in Islamic society and mentions how Western teenagers are sexually active, which he finds worse. He's talking about 14-year-olds who have sex with 14-year-olds and comparing that to 13-year-olds who get married to 30-year-old men. He expressed happiness upon the arrest of an Egyptian atheist, and much more. In short, he wants the world to follow authoritarian, tyrannical Islam, which is just Islam. I don't have a problem with imposing a system on people. I don't have a problem with it, and I think that, yes, Islamic law should be imposed. Everyone should aspire to that, all nations should aspire to that. By his standards, we wouldn't even have the right to object to that, because free speech doesn't exist in his ideal world. It is detrimental to society and must be punished. That always makes me think, isn't it kind of a strange paradox? The irony is that we are giving people who are against freedom the freedom to say that they are against freedom, to advocate for the removal of freedom, because we are for freedom. What caught my attention is that as I was looking through Daniel Hakikachu's history is that a certain Muslim convert and researcher known as Justin Parrott once commented this on Daniel's post after Daniel shared a conservative media report about himself. This is why many scholars have told you privately and publicly to tone it down and stop using inflammatory language. You literally handed an anti-Muslim outlet free propaganda to use against our community. Allah Mustan which means Allah is our helper. Justin Parrott tells him that Muslim scholars have told him before to tone it down because they don't want Daniel Hikikachu to endanger the Muslim community by being very open about his Islamic beliefs. Justin Parrott is also a researcher at the Yakin Institute, an Islamic institute in America, which sugarcoats its articles and messages and uses current issues in order to spread Islamic propaganda in America. The institute nevertheless sticks to common Islamic teachings, such as the justification of Muhammad's child marriage, death penalties for apostasy and homosexuality under an Islamic state, the justification and defense of Islamic slavery, and more. And now, guess what? The founder and president of the Yakin Institute is Omar Suleiman, who was invited by the Democrats to the U.S. House of Representatives for the opening prayer on May 9, 2019 which the Yakin Institute posted on its YouTube channel. Dear Democrats. <laughs> and guess what? Daniel Hikikachu here was a member of the Yakin Institute in 2016 and 2017 before he left the Institute and started a war with them because he accuses the Yakin Institute, like many other Islamic institutes and organizations, of twisting Islam and sugarcoating Islam for public sympathy. And Daniel Hakikachu had his same radical, insane beliefs long before he joined the Yakin Institute, long before they made him a member. There is so much to unravel here, but I will go into that very soon, hopefully before the Democrats get to me. Just kidding, I'm not after conspiracy theories here unless I disappear, in which case... <laughs> I just want to finish this with Daniel Hakikachu's response 
to Justin Parrott. Before you are directed to delete this comment, let me just say that this is exactly the attitude that Christians and Jews took with their religion before their religions were thoroughly secularized, and now some confused Muslims led by scholars are trying to follow suit. According to them, we are supposed to tone down, that is, hide Islam or outright distort it so that those mean non-Muslims won't criticize us. Allah says, and never will the Jews or the Christians approve of you until you follow their religion. Say, indeed, the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. If you were to follow their desires after what has come to you of knowledge, you would have against Allah no protector or helper. By the way, many scholars, not suffering from an inferiority complex, have told me publicly and privately to keep it up. Don't pretend you and your friends speak on behalf of all scholars. It really says it all, doesn't it? I want to thank Daniel Hikikachu for his refreshing honesty, which is rare among the Muslim apologists and scholars. Of course, I don't want to thank him for the things that he actually believes in and is honest about. Maybe I should invite him for a questions and answers session on my channel, where he could clarify his beliefs for himself. Or maybe I should just let him talk, as he already makes Islam look bad, as Islam is. This is a perversion. This is something that is uh, vile. For now, thanks for watching. I will be back with more of these. Seriously, the time has come to address these people. Thank you so much. Have a great day and stay away from Islam.